Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Jennifer Hearn. I am the Chief Officer and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Sports, Youth and Culture. I'm joined this morning by the Honourable Minister, um, Osborne Baden, as well as the Senior Project Manager responsible for our Waste Management Project, Mr. Jim Schubert, and Mr. Phil Scott from AMEC Consultants. So um, thank you very much for joining us here this morning. We wanted to take this opportunity to provide you all with an update on the work that has been going on with regards to the integrated solid waste management system that we are presently in the process of pro procuring for the Cayman Islands. So I'm going to start off by just asking the minister to offer a few remarks. Honorable Minister. Thank you, Jennifer, and good morning to everyone here, and good morning to our listening audience on Radio Cayman. Um, the question of what to do for solid waste has been a long-standing area of concern for the Cayman Islands. Following the recent formation of a multi-agency steering committee and the employment of a world-renowned solid waste project manager, this morning I am proud to announce that we are well on our way to identifying real solutions to our waste management needs. With a successful bid of just over 500,000 CI dollars, AMEC will serve as lead consultant to the steering committee. This figure includes the cost of financial consultant KPMG, which has partnered with AMEC to act in this capacity. AMEC, we know, delivers state-of-the-art waste services to operations in 40 countries and has extensive experience in waste management planning. Meanwhile, our local KPMG office is well up to the task of ensuring plans are financially feasible and sustainable. In addition to developing a national strategy for solid waste management, AMEC will prepare an outlined business case and provide procurement support for an integrated solid waste management system based on the strategy. Having said that, and with work already on the way, I'm confident that we will be able to retain a strong sense of direction as we work to improve our solid waste system. At the same time, it is more than a matter of expert knowledge and skills but also of organization, planning, and enforcement. Waste management is one of the answers to the challenges we face, and the government alone cannot tackle this issue. Accordingly, I urge Caymanians and residents to continue to increase their waste minimization and recycling efforts, and to work together with us towards a clean and healthy environment in the Cayman Islands. Today, we need to all ask ourselves, what am I doing today as an individual to reduce, reuse, repurpose, and recycle waste and trade more lightly on the earth. A special thanks to the steering committee and other key stakeholders for their support and assistance in helping us to reach the stage. The next step will be to develop a timetable of public meetings which will ensure the public has input into the national strategy. I promise too that the search for a waste management solution will remain transparent through regular updates. We will continue to go to great lengths to ensure that the process will be well governed from start to finish. Despite the number of years that it can take, many other countries have successfully turned around their waste management operations. With an innovative approach and a change in our mindset, I believe that we too will be able to meet our goals in a timely and efficient way. Thank you. And I look forward to witnessing our further progress towards a successful waste management system that will meet our country's needs well into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. I'm now <coughs> going to ask Mr. Phil Scott, who is the project manager from AMAC, um, to just offer a few uh, remarks. They've been here for a week. Um, they're based in the UK, and they've been visiting the Cayman Islands for the last week to undergo some site visits and the, some stakeholder meetings internally that we've had. So I'm just going to ask him to say a few words regarding their experience so far. Phil? Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Phil Scott, as Jennifer has said. I'm a technical director with the AMEC. Who specialize, I specialize in the waste management sector. I have over 30 years' experience in, in developing waste management strategies, outlining business cases, and turning them into uh, real solutions on the ground through procurement. Um, AMEC is a multinational company. We have over 30,000 employees distributed around the world working in 40 countries, 41 now that we're here in, uh, in the Caymans. And um, 
We're very excited and absolutely delighted to be working with the government on this project. We've been here, as Jennifer said, just uh, just over a week and on carrying out initial reconnaissance work on the waste management system that's in place at the moment. We've had meetings with both the steering group and the technical committee, the uh, technical committee, and we've undertaken work at um, Georgetown landfill, the landfills on Little Cayman and Cayman Brack, and we've looked at the waste management system, the resources that are available uh, to get a good handle on what's actually happening on the ground within the islands at the moment. That's enabled us to start to form some initial uh, ideas and plans uh, which we look to develop over the, uh, the next few months uh, as we collate information and data that's available. I must say that everywhere we, we've went, every, everyone has been most helpful um, and, and a, ha, there is a high desire for change in the, waste man, the way that waste is management on the island, managed on the islands. Um, we've be become aware that there's actually far more information than we original, originally thought would be available uh, when we landed on the ground, and that's been very, very uh, useful, and we'll be using that information to develop uh, our plans and, and proposals for the waste management strategy and for uh, potential remediation of the landfills. Okay, thanks, Phil. Just for everyone's information, um, the minister mentioned the, the figure of the contract with AMEC and his remarks, and just to um, remind everyone, we did go through the Central Tenders Committee process in awarding the contract. We had the great good fortune of having the lowest bidder also being the most technically strong bid as well. So the bid that we had from AMEC was actually um, the lowest of the bids that were received. They ranged from AMEC's bid up to uh, $1.9 million. So there was quite a big difference between the bids in terms of the cost, but in terms of the technical strength of the bid and the depth of the team, um, the assessment committee for the tender was absolutely convinced without a shadow of doubt that the bid and the team that we had with AMEC was the strongest one. They've got fantastic experience in terms of um, small island waste management. They have uh, a great track record of taking strategies, formulating strategies, and moving them into implementation. The contract that we've awarded to AMEC has three basic deliverables, or three main deliverables. The first one is the National Solid Waste Management Strategy, which the Minister has mentioned in, in other remarks, and as well this morning. Um, as you all, you all will be aware, the Cayman Islands does not have a National Solid Waste Management Strategy at this time. And that's been one of the big barriers to us in terms of trying to move forward with the Integrated Solid Waste Management System procurement. So the first big deliverable for AMEC is going to be helping us come to a national solid waste management strategy. We will be looking to the public to get engaged with us and AMEC in that process. We will be coming out with a, um, a public consultation schedule sometime in the near future. Uh, so I would ask members of the public to sort of watch this space and plan to get engaged with us in the new year when we come out to get your input for that strategy. The next big deliverable for the AMEC contract is the outline business case for the preferred project option then the solid waste management strategy is going to help us identify what the preferred project option parameters are going to look like. At this point, we don't have a preferred project because we're not, we're missing that guiding document to help us identify it. Once we have it, that will be fed into the outline business case process, which AMIC will take forward with KPMG, who partnered with them on their bid. And then the third main deliverable, or the third deliverable of the contract with AMEC is procurement assistance to actually help us procure the preferred project once the outline business case has provided the support for that project. So that once we have the data that reinforces and confirms that that is the best project option for the Cayman Islands, um, AMEC and KPMG will help us procure that project. And the broad timelines for those three things, um, we're looking at the waste management strategy in the first half of next year. We're looking for the OBC to follow on the heels of that, and we're hoping to be out for procurement of this, the preferred project in approximately a year's time. So, so with that, I will open the floor up for any questions that you might have. Uh, good morning, everybody. Jamie Tawil with Radio Cayman. Uh, just a couple questions. Firstly, for Mr. Scott. Uh, I know you said you've only been here a week and uh, had a look at some things. Uh, just curious as to what your initial impression is of the current situation in terms of waste management here, uh, not waste management, but just the, you know, the dumps and what you've seen. Also, 
I know AMAC has uh, done some work, uh, Minister Bodden pointed this out, in similar jurisdictions in terms of this being an island, uh, Guernsey, Isle of Man, and Jersey. Uh, is there anything you can speak to in terms of specific challenges that uh, you guys might see moving forward with this? Um, the, sorry, I just collect my thoughts there. Um, certainly, I mean, we have considerable island based waste management experience, as you just mentioned there, and it does face particular challenges to meet the needs of the local community, um, particularly in terms of um, scale of economies and things like that, that we have to look very closely to match the potential waste management solutions to make sure that they fit uh, the islands correctly. In terms of what we've look, seen on the reconnaissance visit so far, is that the existing waste management system is not sustainable for the future. It does have to change, and that's part of this process to identify the ways in which it can change and best meet best meet the needs of the islands moving forward. Yeah. Uh, just another question for Minister Bodden. Uh, I think Ms. Ahern just mentioned, uh, touched briefly on timeline. Was that uh, about a year from now for the business case or for the implementation of the strategy itself? For the procurement, procurement. of the preferred project. Right. Yeah. We're talking so about it about a year from now. About the end of yeah. 2015. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and much, and, that pretty much puts us in a position where by the time you go through all the, the, the actual procurement process and planning permission and all the like, hopefully by the end of, of 2016, the latest, we should be actually seeing you know, a plant being whatever it is being constructed. And lastly, for Minister Bladen, you, you called this uh, just a couple of days ago, a, this entire process and, and issue of uh, the dump and waste management in Cayman, a political hot potato. You mentioned you're going to put out uh, 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 public consultations. Just curious as to what kind of feedback you're expecting uh, when it comes to this, because uh, as you mentioned, it has been a bit of a hot button issue. Well, it, this issue uh, has been up in arms for a long time. And I think that when we go to the public, we expect people to, some of them will vent their frustrations. Some will offer constructive advice. Some will want to be involved. Uh, we expect a wide, wide cross section, but that's our job to go out there and hear what you know, what the public feels, and and the ideas that there may well be some good ideas that that flow from that. So we, we're not, we're not going to shy away from that. Um, thanks. Can I just ask, just to get some clarification? Uh, obviously, this is a very open-ended uh, process. You you don't have any preconceived ideas about what the solutions are going to be. No. Can you just talk about location though? Um, is there a possibility that this could come back and say it needs to be moved? The, the, lo the current standing? location uh, of the landfill and, and what we currently use as known as a dump, um, that location certainly will be used. Um, now, the, the solution that comes out of this whole um, process may well be that there will be elements of the process that may be around the island. You may have depots, you may, ha you may have... Uh, composting station, whatever it is, we, it, you will find that I, I'm convinced that it all won't be on one site, that's for sure. But there, there will be a, a large part of it. We're, we're not closing the site. We are going to continue to operate that site and use it for what we can. The, the policy guidance that we have from Cabinet that defines the parameters of the procurement, which is in the strategic outline case document, is that it, with regards to the island of Grand Cayman, any landfill will only be sited at the current Georgetown right. landfill site. Okay, so that so any new lined landfill will be in that, that location. It site. won't be anywhere else. <laughs> right, the other thing, can I just clarify? Will there be? I mean, whether Mr. Scott can give us some idea, having seen the landfill now in the state it's in, what, what whether that will be remediated? Like what what the plan, what type of plans you would have for remediation, as well as going forward with how we treat modern waste? What's the outline? I know you can't be specific, but give yeah. us some ideas about the remediation because that's a big problem, the leaking yeah. and everything. Certainly, I mean, we will be looking at how the, how, you know, how the landfills can be uh, managed in the future, moving towards their potential, uh, the potential uh, reduction, substantial reduction or cessation of landfill. Um, we'll be looking at how we can look at uh, practically remediate that site, whether there are options for maybe removing elements of the waste and using them more Productively, we will look at the, looking at those sorts of options. The key to this will be movement up the waste management hierarchy, diverting waste as much as we can away from landfill uh, through the upper the echelons of that waste management hierarchy, through minimisation, 
and that may include sort of education initiatives, etc. Uh, through reuse of materials, encouraging materials that are, are uh, waste to one resident may be useful and, and uh, a useful resource for other residents to make sure they can be reused, and also uh, encouraging recycling, the separation of uh, valuable components that are currently part of the residual waste stream. We've seen aluminium cans being recycled, but we need to extend that to other materials such as glass, paper, cord, organic material as well, uh, which can potentially be composted and used to provide a useful fertiliser on agricultural land up, um, on the islands. So um, as much as we can, we will use those, pro we look at the options by which we can encourage those processes and reduce the landfilling of waste um, to its minimum as, as far as possible. I just want to ask our project manager if he wants to add anything to that. Um, yes, and good morning, everyone. Um, I think there are parts of the project that we can do quickly. So um, the bigger facilities will take time to be developed. So some of them take over two years to construct alone. That's after procurement. But there's other portions of the uh, um, integrated waste management plan that could be done very quickly. So we could expand our recycling by adding depots or start doing some windrow composting which could make a larger dent in the waste stream so i think we're going to be looking at trying to implement those uh, types of things sooner than later which would all be part of the integrated waste management plan when it it moved it moves ahead Thank you, Jim. You read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, that's just made me think of a follow-up now in terms of the procurement, because if you're saying you're perhaps going to do composting before we get to the point of a procurement, th th this waste management strategy may actually go out in bits and pieces, and you won't necessarily have one contractor doing everything. Well, the, the strategy is the, the, the guiding document that we're going to come up with first, and then the system could potentially go out in, on a on a a phased procurement, I guess, would be the way to, to call it. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. So yes. we can break it into packages <coughs> that, that yeah. are designed to deliver best value to the. To Depending the on. Island. It'll be a, a la carte menu, depending. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be time too that one contractor runs it for a period of time. And then if we want it all in one shop, that contract ends around the time yeah. the right. other facilities come right. into play. So yeah. we'll have to look at the different options when we get to yeah. that point. Yeah. But the idea is with the waste management strategy, with the team that we have on board, is that we're going to take a very strategic approach to delivering this solution. And we're very conscious of the need to deliver um, as much as we can, as quickly as we can. Right within the parameters of achieving the overall objective. Exactly. So we are moving through the process very much with our eyes on the prize, but also looking for ways along the way that we can make some changes that will still fit in with the, the, the final project and achieve what we would like to achieve. Brent? I just wanted to make sure I have this timeline that you gave correct, Ms. Ahern, that the, um, the solid waste management strategy will be released in the first part, of, or will be finalized in the first part of next year? Is that like before March? I would say probably the first, within the first six months. Some okay. We are looking to uh, and then there's the public meetings? Yeah, they'll be within that six month process. Okay, yeah. public meetings will be within the six month process. Yeah. Okay. And then there is an outline business case which will identify the preferred project option. Well, the preferred project option will be identified. Um, from the solid waste management strategy. Okay. And that will be fed into the outline business case. Okay, and when does the outline business case? The outline business case is the second half of next year. Okay. Um, um, okay, and then there is the procurement, which will be the process for the procurement will be over, presumably by the end of 2015. That, or it will be finalized. It'll, it'll be commenced at the commenced. towards the end of 2015. Commenced yeah. towards the end of 2015. So, um, and as you know, with our central tenders process, and I would imagine it's going to be quite a complex project. Yeah. So I would anticipate that the procurement of that. the solution is going to take us a little longer than um, a you know four week up and down yeah. CTC process. But right. yeah. I would I would expect if we right. were spring, out pretender spring. at the end of next year, it would be early the following year that we would be. Mm. 
from warding the contract. Warding it. Okay, and then Mr. Bodden, Minister Bodden said that by the end of 2016, we should see some work commence? I would think so. Okay. I, I would think that if, you, if we procured a contractor, say in the spring, um, plan it, uh, all plans and everything have to be approved, and uh, I see no reason why we can't have uh, some action by the end of 2016. Okay, and, and so then this is a probably a f um, very difficult, if not impossible, to answer, but if you don't know what exactly what, what type of project you're undertaking, but when does this all get wrapped up by, or when might the public see? As soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, as, it's, as Jim just said, and plants can take up to two years to build. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to understand that there are, there's a lot going on, and, and the strategy is, will, will be being implemented in the meantime. And the, the, but it basically, I mean, we're not looking that this is going to be completed by May 2017. No. Okay. So no. finish it, fin finishing this is going to be up to whatever, whoever the next government is. That's there, correct. Say. Okay. Um, yeah, and then um, I just want to also nail down something that was said earlier. When, when Mr. Bodden, you said that the location, the landfill won't change locations, but there might be other things such as recycling stations or composting stations that's that are other, else, elsewhere around. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, just one question for Mr. Scott. Can, can you rate, based on your extensive experience, how bad the, the landfill problem is in Cayman right now? I mean, can you compare it to other places that, I, mean, I don't know if you, you would put it on like a scale of one to 10 or yeah. something like this, but. I, I, I would say, you know, in terms of um, the waste management systems at the moment, we're looking at something that's equivalent to what was being used, you know, what was being deployed 30 years ago in the UK, 20 to 30 years ago. Um, so, you know, we've had a program in place um, over that time where gradually uh, recycling, reuse and, re uh, and composting systems have gradually been introduced. Obviously, the, the task here is to introduce those systems much more quickly to get those, uh, those rewards and get the level of diversion uh, up as high as we possibly can. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Ralph Lewis Employment Weekly. Um, this question is for Mr. For Mr. Scott. Um, the minister mentioned that the solution should be an island-wide solution. In other words, the community as a whole and the government will be responsible for completing and implementing the solution. Do you foresee the um, cancellation of um, garbage recovery from homes, or do you see a situation where um, homeowners will be sorting their garbage and delivering them to depots? Certainly we'll be looking at the various options to, that we can provide. I think people need that resource to be able to segregate the need. They need not just the education part of it, but you need the actual c physical capability to be able to undertake the separation of those materials. And we'll be looking at various means by which that can be delivered, whether it's people bringing materials to what we'd call bring banks and uh, household waste recycling centres, we have them in the UK and they're used for certain types of materials, but we'll also be looking at potential curbside systems as well, where people are giving the opportunity at home as well to be able to have bins that allow them to segregate materials as well. Uh, so we'll be looking at all, op all options um, and trying to identify what best f fits the needs of the islands and the residents. Of course, um, because of the size of the island, I think that that's more doable than it referring to larger jurisdictions. So would you consider the size of the island um, ideal for that sub, sub, sort of operation? Certainly, we, you know, in terms of um, Grand Cayman, I don't think there's any, any issues at all with being able to uh, put in place those sorts of systems. I think on the sister islands, we'll, we'll be looking to tailor those systems, give the same opportunity, the quality of opportunity to the residents on those islands, uh, but looking maybe at sort of slightly tailored delivery systems to enable them to do the same thing. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Minister Bodden, did you want to offer some concluding remarks? Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. And <coughs> thank you, uh, media, for some very relevant questions. Uh, suffice it to say that this is indeed a, a very happy day, uh, especially for me, <laughs> because of all of the flack and the negative um, surrounding um, of this process. But I think it should be starting to become clear to the public that if we had rushed headlong into something of this magnitude, we probably by now would have poured a lot of bad, good money after a bad result. 
Th this is not by any means a simplistic process. There are so many variables. Even after we're done and we come up with a solution, there may be another solution that, that, that's out there that somebody thought would, would have been a better one because there, there's no right right thing when it comes to, to dealing with this. It's, it's a bunch of uh, variables that come together to give us what we consider the ideal one for us. And it's all tailor-made. You can't pick a package off the shelf and say, plunk this into the Cayman Islands. It doesn't work like that. Um, suffice it to say that we are working hard. Uh, the, the strategy and having Jim uh, on board as our project manager with a wealth of experience from Canada will continue and we will start to unfold many of the quick wins, as it were. We certainly will be looking at, 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 at depots, at composting stations. The, the key to it is that people need to understand we have to move away from the model that we've had. That is, everything goes to the dump. Uh, a proper waste management system, it doesn't work that way. What goes to the dump it usually is residual waste. And then the plant, whatever that plant is, processes that waste comes up with an inert material that goes into your landfill that you don't have to worry about burning, smelling, or creating any sort of uh, environmental hazard. So we have to bear in mind that this whole process will involve an, an EIA, it will involve legal uh, teams, and it is a complex process. But I think that the, the way that the whole thing started with the steering committee and to the point where we've reached and having a company of the pedigree of AMEC on board has boosted us tremendously, and we are now well on our way, and there's no turning back. So, Mr. Fuller, whoever the government is, and I hope it's us, but whoever it is, they won't be able to discontinue this process, sir. Thank you all very much, and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.